What's an aimbot? Okay guys, I got a different type of video today Huge. and I wanted to answer a question that I get asked so often, uh, almost every day. Uh, that question being, how do you get out of ELO hell? How do you do it? What is ELO hell? I mean, to me, personally, I think ELO hell is subjective. I think everybody has their own ELO hell. And to get out of it, you need to recognize what you're doing in your performance. Starting this new account, I kind of realized a few things. Uh, because I finally, for once, I was trying to grind out for SR. I wasn't just playing Widow to, to win games and, you know, upload games for you guys. Because basically, you guys come to the channel to watch Widowmaker stuff, right? Well, playing on this account, I was playing on this account to grind for SR. The goal here was I had six days after I placed in Plat to grind out, and I wanted to get into Masters. And with it falling through Christmas and whatnot, you know, with all the family stuff, I really didn't have that much time. So... I did a lot of flexing. I primarily played Widow by a long shot, but the thing is, with this account for me, I'm gonna like I'm gonna be talking about a lot about my perspective. Okay, so this it might not relate to you directly, but trust me, it'll come full full circle and it'll it'll make sense. So for me, in these lower elo brackets, my Widow is strong enough that even if they have a, a Diva Winston, I can usually play Widow through that. Okay, now I've had four separate accounts. On three separate seasons, that's 12 times to 39.50 SR. And I can't get past that point. That to me is my ELO hell. That is. And my goal for season eight is to reach top 500. I want to do it. And this is the season for it to happen. I'm going to do it. In order for me to do that, I need to recognize what I'm doing and I need to improve. And this is going to directly relate to you guys because in order for you to get past your ELO hell, you need to do the same thing. So I was going over the leaderboards, the top 500 leaderboards, because I'm familiar with a lot of these names. So at top 10, nobody plays Widow. Then you have Assault Rifle Master. He plays with Zim4. He has a YouTube channel. Feel free to check him out. But keyboard and mouse Widow, top 500. Then you scroll down, Vex Armor, keyboard and mouse. Uh, Mortal, I'm not familiar with him, but I'm, I'm sure he's a really good Widow. Uh, as you go through, uh, there's another one. So that's four Widowmaker players so far. Not a single one. Xeronix, he plays with a controller, I believe. I played with him before. He's really good. So that's five. Then you have Trix. Best, as far as I'm concerned, Trix is the best Widowmaker player in this game. By far. He's he's the one that I know that plays with the controller, and he's a monster. Uh, he also has a YouTube channel. Feel free to check him out. Just search his name. You'll find it, I'm sure. But there's really not that many. There really isn't. Widowmaker with the V's, that's a Vex Armor Smurf. There's a few others. And the point that I'm trying to make here, I, I don't care if people use keyboard and mouse. I really don't. It makes no difference to me, honest to God. I, it, I don't really care. Uh, but out of all of the entirety of Top 500, there might be 10 players who main Widow. And out of the 10, they're keyboard and mouse. Like most of them are keyboard and mouse. That's why I have such a high respect for guys like Trix. Uh, who, I, like I said, I believe is the best Widowmaker player in this game. Uh, he uses a controller, which is... He's insane. But, uh, anyways, all these Widowmaker players, they know when to switch. They know when they're being countered. And they, they won't just play Widow into some bullshit and lose games, right? Like, they, they grind for that SR. They, they're always trying to win. And that's my problem. That's where my ELO hell comes in. That 3950 range, right? I can't play Widowmaker into a, a Winston Diva Genji at 39.50. Sure, I can I can play a really a really good Widow. I'm a strong Widowmaker. I think I've proven that, and no! I don't think I need to to actually say that I am. I I think most people see that, right? But it doesn't matter how good you are. You're not going to play into your counters. That's like saying a Winston main. You could be the best Winston player in the game, but you're not gonna play Winston into a Reaper Zenyatta. Bastion, right? Like you're not gonna play a Winston into that. You're gonna get hard countered and you're gonna lose the game, plain and simple. So for me to keep climbing and get to where I wanna be, I need to start branching out and playing other heroes. And that's exactly what's going to happen. And in order for me to do that, I'm probably gonna be taking a few L's, learning other heroes, right? That's why I was so happy when this account placed in plat, because I was able to play other heroes, learn the mechanics. And, you know, grind to where I wanted to be, my goal being Masters. 
as other heroes and not just playing Widowmaker. Because in the lower tiers, you can play Widowmaker. No offense to any of you guys, but you can play Widowmaker into a Diva, a Winston, a Genji, if you're good enough. Because a lot of the lower tiers, they're not familiar with mechanics enough to really be able to counter a Widow, right? Anyways, whatever. Get, get past that. <clears throat> so, Elo Hell... I think is subjective to everybody. Everybody has their own ELO hell. You could be in plat trying to be into diamond. You could get goals every single game as DPS and be like, I can't physically do any more. Just know you can always do more. You can always do more. Uh, watching back on this game, this soldier game, on uh, on the attack, I used attack visor at a really poor, a poor moment. And I basically, we still won. You'll see in the gameplay, but... We still won, but watching it back, I could have used my attack visor in a way better manner and actually been useful. I mean, it was still useful, but it could have been better. You know what I mean? That's what, and I had all the golds, so it's like, do I say? If, what if we ended up losing or drawing this game? Right? I could have been like, oh my god, like I had all the golds and we still lost, but that one attack visor could have won us the game, right? And I think that relates to everybody. Everybody could be doing better. So it doesn't matter how good you're doing. It takes one alt to win a team fight. You could be a McCree and you could have a fat high noon. You could be Zarya and have a, a huge grav. Or you could be you could be a Lucio and the enemy team could use their grav and boom, you drop the beat, right? And you survive through that grav and you end up winning the game. Or you get a fat boop or something. Like Every game is different. Every situation is different. And to climb out of ELO hell... You just need to win games. Here, this is the attack visor that I, I was talking about just a minute ago. This right here was poor. I saw the Velking Mercy, and I thought, ooh, I'm going to attack visor this Mercy and get her out of the air. Well, that backfired pretty heavily. I was lucky enough to get the Soldier, but I mean, that was a poor attack visor. And I'm lucky enough that I was able to recoup, and the entire team was able to, to play around this. But that was a really bad attack visor, as far as I'm concerned. And that's why this is such a learning experience. And this is why if you want to climb, it's like it doesn't matter how good you're doing, you can always do something better. Let's say let's say you're a Reaper main, okay? I know there are a lot of Reaper mains out there. But let's say you're playing Reaper, you're defending Reaper against an attacking dive comp, okay? Let's say Zarya Diva Genji Tracer. <clears throat> you're not going to play Reaper into that very well. A stronger hero will probably be a guy like Junkrat or McCree because you can deal with flankers a lot easier. You got a lot of spam damage. I know I said Diva or uh, Junkrat into a Zarya, but honestly, in this meta, Junkrat is so strong that it doesn't even matter if you're playing a Junkrat into a Zarya. You can charge a Zarya. It makes no difference. Junkrat is incredibly strong. But <clears throat> I think I think my situation can relate to a lot of you guys. So for me in season eight. My plan is to grind out SR as hard as I can. I've never spent a season where it's like, oh, I want nothing to do but win, 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 win. This season, that's changing. This season, that is absolutely changing because I want to I wanna see how high I can possibly climb in the leaderboards. <clears throat> like I said, a lot of that, a lot of it matters on your team. It does. It definitely does. Elo Hell isn't, I think... A thing related on your teammates because you're not gonna have bad teammates every single game you're not gonna have throwers every single game you're not gonna have toxic players every single game a lot of it does rely on you and a lot of it does rely on you doing better and there's always more that a person can do and that's that's kind of what I realized towards the end of the season and that's why I feel so strongly about grinding out for SR this season because I always there's always comments on my videos saying oh uh you're not even that good. You're in Masters. It's like, well, I I think I'm a pretty good Widow. And I think a lot of you guys would agree that I am a pretty good Widow. I think a lot of people would say that I'm a one-trick Widow. And while I would agree with that in, in, some, in some parts, but I think everybody has their main, their strongest hero. I think a one-trick is different than a main. Uh, as far as Widow goes, Widow is my strongest hero by far. Widow is most definitely my strongest hero. And the thing with Widow is that the skill translates really well to guys like McCree, Soldier, Tracer. Basically, anybody that requires a bit of aim, the skill translates really well. But the game mechanics doesn't. And the only way to learn the game mechanics 
uh, and by that I mean like let's say McCree for instance, right? You wanna you wanna deflect a or you wanna flashbang a deflecting Genji or above a Reinhardt shield, right? Like there's there's ways of going about doing that, and it, you can do it, but you have to actually play McCree to do it. Uh, same thing with Soldier, like being in the right position at the right time, knowing when to flank, to be on the high ground, to run away. Like there's so much involved in the game, and then even filling tank roles and support roles. There's so much involved, and I think that I can get to a high SR and compete with the best players in this game. I do believe that, and this this season eight, I'm going to be trying my best to do that. It'll be a learning curve at the beginning for sure because I don't play a lot of other heroes other than Widowmaker, but that's going to change, and I'm going to try to climb. And that's basically to me what Elo Hell is. Elo Hell is the wall that you can't get past. And there's a reason why you can't get past that. So if you personally want to get past your Elo Hell, you need to look back and think, okay, what could I do better or differently to change this? For me, it's playing other heroes. Plain and simple. When you get to the high Elo, I get countered way too hard. And I can't play Widow into a lot of, into a lot of team comps. There's a lot of really good players on console, and it just can't happen, right? <clears throat> so basically what I'm saying is, is you, need to, you need to look back on the games that you're losing that you think you're carrying in, and you need to, and you need to think to yourself, what could I have done differently or better to, to turn this game around? Regardless if you have a thrower or not. Let's say, let's say you were playing Zarya and you had a really shitty graph. Maybe that graph could have changed the perspective of the game. It could have, it could have went a whole different direction if you had a better graph. Or maybe you were a Lucio and you beat drop better. You know, like there were so many different situations. Every game is different. And you always, you need to remember that you are going to lose a lot of games. I mean, the game, I don't think it's true, but I do believe that the game does enforce uh, a force. It's called a force 50, basically. And it tries to force you to have a 50% win rate. That's what it tries to do. So you need to, as an individual, you need to play really, really strong to get past these ranks. There's a wall there for a reason. It puts you in these ranks for a reason. I do believe that. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. But that that is what I believe. And in order for me to get past my ELO hell, I know what I need to do. I can't tell you what you need to do to get past your ELO hell. Because everybody ELO hell is different. So what I'm trying to say here <clears throat> is plain. It's simple. It's easy. You need to look back and you need to think and you need to change something or you need to queue with another person. Duo queuing is great because if you if you duo queue with somebody that you have chemistry with, let's say you're a Zarya Hanzo. There's a lot of players that like playing Hanzo, but Hanzo sucks in a lot of team comps. She's just like Widowmaker. Unless you're a monster Hanzo, you're not going to win games. Now, this change is big time if you are dual queuing with Azaria. Because you could be the worst Hanzo in the game. It doesn't matter how bad you are. If you're dual queuing with Azaria and you combo a Grav Dragon and it's fat and you get it, you win the game with the ult like that. You win a game like that. So you could be the worst Hanzo ever. But if you're willing to, to communicate and you're willing to to combo with your Zarya or even even like an Earth Shatter or something, you could win a game by doing absolutely nothing but clicking triangle. And that's what people need to realize in this game is that there's always that one situation that can win them a game. There's one play. One play could change the entire outcome of a, of a game, right? <laughs> and that's where I'm at and that's what I'm trying to change. That's why I'm not going to be playing as much Widowmaker. And I'm going to be trying to learn other heroes because in Season 8, my goal is to hit top 500. At some point, it's going to happen, and Season 8 is the season that it happens. And I'm going to I'm gonna try my best to do it. The Widowmaker gameplay ain't going to ever stop. I'm going to keep playing, but there's going to be other heroes involved, and I'm reaching that leaderboard, boys. I'm confident in getting past my ELO hell, and you guys can do it too. Yeet! You did it! Yeah! Watch it.